That's Before we get into this synthesis, you know, this is what has been brought together about what people in Ireland and the Irish Church are saying. Tell us a little bit about what this synod process is. What's it all about? Well, <clears throat> Wendy, I, I suppose simply Pope Francis uh, felt that it was uh, the right time in the Catholic Church all around the world for uh, baptised Catholics to have an opportunity to have their voices heard in um, a whole new way. So what is your job then at the moment from the Irish perspective? So um, I'm sure a lot of the, the viewers would be familiar with the Diocesan conversations that took place at Diocesan level during the past year. So then all that had to be condensed and synthesized, brought together, yeah. brought together, each diocese, each religious movement, each religious congregation made their synthesis. That all came together then. And the document that you're holding there is the national synthesis, which then was sent on to Rome. And then recently there has been a, a meeting in, in Frascati outside Rome, uh, where the people from all around the world just got to work on that and work on all the different syntheses from all around the world. And we now have a working document for the next phase. And that's where we are now. This is the biggest listening exercise that the church has ever undertaken. Um, so it is history in that it way. It is, absolutely. And I imagine from the synthesis from all over the world, there's so many different issues and, and voices to be heard. But what about here in Ireland? What were some of the key things that arose in the various conversations that we had? So some of the main themes that spring to mind for me immediately would be uh, clergy, liturgy, uh, the need for further adult faith development. Um, the role of women was obviously seemed to be paramount both here in Ireland and across the globe. Um, youth involvement was another theme. Um, care for uh, those from the LGBT plus community was also a theme. And obviously, uh, more sadly for us as the church in Ireland, uh, abuse as part of the story of who we are was a very prominent um, theme in the in the synthesis. So what is the hope then when we hear these voices and we hear the issues that are important to people in the Irish Church, what, what is meant to happen with that then in terms of where that information goes, what's its purpose overall? That's a, that's a question that a lot of people have when they hear about the Synod and when they hear about these meetings and these conversations where we're listening to each other, you know, what's it all going to lead to? And I, I think there's probably a bit of maybe fatigue about that idea as well. They say, okay, look, at, you know, is this just a talk shop, you know, where everybody says, but nothing happens, you know? Um, what, I think the, what's at the core of the synod and what synodality is really, really all about and what Pope Francis really wants from this is that there is a discernment made around these issues. So we're trying to yeah. say, what is the Holy Spirit saying exactly. through the people exactly. from across the world? Exactly, exactly. That um, this is not just a kind of a fact-finding mission. It's not just a, a kind of a survey of what people think. You know, there's a un underpinning all of this is a very, very strong Christian belief that the Spirit speaks through the baptized. You know, that when the, when the baptized meet together and when they pray together and when they listen to the Word of God together and when they speak together with love for one another and for the church and for God, that the Spirit is there. And it's up to the church now, you know, <clears throat> universally to discern what the Spirit is saying here. I know mm. one of the things that has, has come back as well is just people saying it's great to be listened to, it's great mm. to have these conversations and something that seems to have come across around the world is people care about their faith, yeah. they care yeah. about their local parish, they, they yeah. want it to thrive. Yeah. Yeah. in areas yeah. where maybe it's not and participation yeah. is low yeah. and, and they're participating in this process yeah. because they want yeah. the church to, to, yeah. to grow yeah. and to thrive. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the, sorry, yeah. that's one of the main things that came through as well for us um, as part of the National Steering Committee. Um, that sense of belonging that was desired by so many and then I think there was a lovely um, sentiment that came through in the Irish document that has also materialised in the international document, which was uh, a lovely line that says, those who feel at home in the church really feel the absence of those who don't. Yeah, but, but there was a lot of rawness and, and pain that came through, you know, but even despite that, what you, could, what you could detect and what you could sense coming through was a deep love, you know, for the church and a deep desire that the church would recover some of its, its confidence you know, in being um, evangelical and going out, you know, with, 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 with its message. 
and and that's in in the in the working document that came from Frascati, which we now have to consider. Uh, it comes through very very strongly in that as well. Mm. That uh, there's a deep desire, you know, among the faithful all around the world for the church to be confident in in proclaiming its in message. In the good news that we have in to share. In the good news that we have to share, mm. and that comes through even where there's pain. Yeah, which is extraordinary. So we have our Irish synthesis of what Irish people have to say, but there was 111 other synthesis from countries around the world and that was brought together in Frascati in Italy. And then they created a document. What was the key theme of that? So the title for that document was Enlarge the Space of Your Tent, which was really interesting because I don't know about you, Wendy, but I come from a, a strong camping family. Uh, so I thoroughly enjoyed the, the theme that uh, went with this document because if there's anything I do know about camping is uh, you have to have your sturdy guide ropes and, and your pegs. Strong pegs. Strong yeah. pegs, the foundation to hold your, your tent in place. But the beauty of all tents is that once you unzip aside, you can always add on another zipping and another zipping and keep enlarging the amount of uh, communal tents that can be added on to the space. Um, and I think that that's something that they were capturing in Frascati when they discerned that that was going to be the title for this document, that uh, it was about bringing in all of these voices and others that are yet to be heard. So there's always space for more in this tent. And I know the other thing that I know about our camping world is uh, it protects us from so much when we're on the move because the idea too of the tent, particularly with the Old Testament, was that uh, as the people journeyed, they journeyed under the security of, of this tent uh, that protected them from the elements on the way. And please God that that's what this uh, journey is doing for us as well. What yeah. about you, Tony? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a lovely, rich image drawn from the scriptures, you know, drawn from the, the prophet Isaiah. And um, I, 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 would, I would recommend actually your viewers to, to access the document and to read the lovely commentary. It's quite short on that biblical image of the tent and uh, how rich it is, you know. Um, in practical terms, you know, what does it mean for us? What, what does it mean that we have to now discern? Um, yeah, just exactly as Julianne said, it means that we have to, in some way, find ways to make space, you know, for other voices, other people. You know, we can't allow ourselves to become this enclosed, you know, community, inward looking, yeah. looking tight knit community. You know, we all love community, we all love the support it offers, but you know, we also have to make space. You know, we have to make sure that other people who seek the shelter of our tent can find space there. And that's really important. For people watching, sometimes they might feel all they, all they hear is kind of bad news in relation to the church or, you know, or, or feel lonely sometimes in their faith. But when you've taken part in this process and you're considering what's happening around the world as well with it, do you feel hopeful for the future of the church? I definitely do. Yes. Um, and I, I think it's, it's been a privilege to be part of such an historical moment. Um, away from being a faith moment, um, it's, it's just purely an historical moment. So I just feel a huge privilege to have been um, involved in this moment in time in it. And I'm very hopeful. I think we can't not be uh, hopeful. We're Easter people yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, um, we've been talking a lot for a long time in Ireland about renewal and so on. And we've been struggling, I think, to actually, you know, find a way to renew, you know. Um, I think what Pope Francis has offered the church here is a, is, a, is a very, very helpful pathway towards the renewal that we need. Um, one of the words that <clears throat> I think it went a little bit unnoticed at first when Pope Francis began to speak about synodality was, you know, he used the word style. He, he asked the church, let us embody this style of God who accompanies his people on the path of history. You know, and I think uh, that word is helpful because it, 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 it kind, of, kind of encourages us to reimagine the church in a new style, a, you know, a, a style that accompanies people you know, on their life journey. You know, a style that, you know, the, where the church is walking beside people, accompanying them and um, 
sharing with them. Meeting them where they're at. Meeting them where they're at That's and sharing That's what Jesus with did. Them. Exactly. 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 Mm. Well, it's been lovely to talk to you both and we thank you for the work that you've been doing as part of this process and look forward to catching up with you again as it's as it's ongoing. Yeah. Thanks for joining us yeah. on iCatholic today. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Thanks very Wendy. much. Pleasure. And if you want to find out more details on the process or you want to get involved, you can find more information on the website on the screen below. Thank you.